great day in the morning, Coach Matt Haddix. Urbanites and Bravehearts, switch it up a little bit. And welcome to CMHU's General, General Assembly for October 2019. Our theme is Lenuminous Activating. And so Numinous means the whole the whole soul, the whole world soul, the collective and also uh, the unconscious collective what Carl Gustav Jung used to uh, refer to it back in his day. It's, it's the whole thing. It's the whole kit and caboodle which has soul <laughs> that we are all connected to. There's a small piece of it that breaks off and comes to this realm in flesh. What we are, what most, <laughs> it's a growing number, it's a growing number of uh, new humans um, on a quest to find out what we do that for. What did we leave swords? Break away from swords came into embodiment to dwell within this dimension. For what? What do we do that for? I think it's been about, I want to say about a week. I'm almost certain it's been within the, within this, this, within the last seven day cycle. I woke up one morning and the Daylight hadn't even reached yet. And Lenuminous Activated was on like immediately. As soon as I came into consciousness. The term Numinous, I had been researching for about a month now. Um, trying to understand what it meant to me. And... Um, Because I am in love with the French, with the with the with the French language, not the French society so much, and it, I felt like I needed to say that. But the language is so sexy; it is just so immaculate. And so, um, "le" stands for, and it translates in English to "the." So it just seems instead of saying "the numinous." <laughs> Um, I began to think of it and conjure it in terms of Lenuminous. It started out being Lenuminous Networking. Looking for and um, yeah, being on the lookout. Not necessarily seeking, but being on the lookout for quest mates that were also um, part of the Lenuminous Activation Crew. And this definitely uh, deals with um, storytelling, arts, crafts, um, um, music, dance, um, all of the right brain stuff, all of the right brain hemisphere Urkel folks. <laughs> Is that a word? Hemispherical, hemisphere, hemisphere folks. Okay, those that dwell within the right brain hemisphere. <laughs> those that create and produce original content and remixes. Those that cover, it doesn't matter. If you are within the space where you listen, listen where you are listening. If you're within the active space where you are listening to your inner voice and you are staying respectful to the hunches that dwell within you and you have taken up the oath to find your paths, walk your paths, and share about those experiences once you return from your path then you are part of the Lenuminous Network. 
And according to my intu intuition, it is now activated. So all things that you have been doing, participating in, pondering, investigating, sponsoring, meditating, courting, all of those things are part of the activation of your connectivity to the collective divine consciousness. It's a wonderful day in Washington, D.C. It's early in the morning. The rain is slightly coming down. Um, I love it when it rains. It's a magical, wondrous day when it rains. Um, it does quite a bit for my creativity and my writing. Uh, I'm still in the midst of problem solving because for some reason it just chimed in my ear for all the for the sassy, sarcastic people who will probably watch this who know me who would say some you know, some shit about me being able to create this, that, and a third instead of this, that, and a third. <laughs> I get it. It's happening. Watch my words. It's happening. So in the meantime, I've been getting the message to work with what I have. That successively, succinctively, <laughs> it, it, it will eventually become a quilt it will become that blankie so with that said I am going to open up um, the General Assembly and bring it officially into session with the following you know I always have to do honorarium right <laughs> Look at that. Can you see it? Isn't that just beautiful? It's like, where you been all my life, right? And so I have to bring some things back. Because in the world of the virtual, <laughs> we want to take all of our entire experiences, acquaintances, encounters, our entire existence upload it up to this virtual into the virtual space as if we aren't still here within human body needing to touch and feel some things yes <laughs> yeah you just need to touch and feel some things you will know the truth by the way that it feels this is one of my favorites can you see it see if you can see it. Okay, stand by for a minute, y'all. Okay, we're back. We're back. Um, and so they this is this is how music and I know I've said it before, but sometimes I just wanna just show you like for all of the more younger Coach Mad Hatters who are beginning to rock with us, just know that it was more, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was just, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but you know, there is, there is content, there is, there is print. It was, it was so much more arriving um, than just the than just the the music it's almost like um, like the artwork it, it was a it was a it is a not a, not well stumbling with my words today please forgive me um, <laughs> Mm 
a piece all in itself. I can't think of anything else right now because, yeah, my mind is always blown when I get to sit with original artwork for a project. And that doesn't matter if it's um, the jacket of a DVD for a film or movie, documentary. Um, I think I'm always going to be a vinyl girl, though. I think that I'm just going to always be, I'm going to always be that girl that um, has a thing for for the vinyl. Yeah. So that's the honorarium to usher in our General Assembly for October 2019. And now I have to think about it. When I first said that, did I say 2009? 2009 has been sticking. Like, it really wants me to pay attention to it. Um, understanding that we only have a few more months in this calendar year, which will make it a full 10 years. And so I wonder, I wonder if I am being beckoned to do a 10-year, do you remember, it was a couple months ago, I think it was at the beginning of the year where everybody was posting these, these photos, these 10-year, you know, this was me then and this is me now thing. I know um, on my Facebook feed. And I only have Facebook. I don't do social media all that much. I only have Facebook. I, I have LinkedIn. And I have my blog. So, um, for a good little while, it was, it was, and everybody was doing it too. Like, the, the, my words escape me. But the, endorsement, the activity, the participation, <laughs> the participation. And it was like the energy was so high with everyone posting their, their photos, like their 10 year photos. And I even said something, I even plugged into the feed, which didn't get any feedback as usual. I'm over it, but I'm going to say it here since we are within the realm of Coach Matt Hattery. And I'm, a, I'm going to pose it to you. Um, how do you depict your maturity post 10 years? Like, yes, a photo is worth a thousand words. But I think a narrative is worth 10,000 words. And... What about a, a 10 year narrative? Like, what if we. Produced. Our story in 10 year increments. Even in like album form, like like what if what if this was an album? What if this was an album of Stanley's 2009 to 2019? And those who know me know I'm already working on it. They, um, they kind of side eye me and be very dismissive when I tell them that I'm going to make an album. And it's going to pay homage to Richard Pryor, to, um, oh my gosh, I see his name right now. Um, I not see his name. I see his face. Um, come on, give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> um, Iceberg Slim. Um, ah, ah, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Uncle Petey Waldo <laughs> Green. Yeah, Petey Green. Yeah. Um, Mom's Mabley, uh, Ida B. Wells, uh, Madam C.J. Walker, um, Frederick Douglass, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, uh, 
my great uncle Gilbert Augustus Diggs. <laughs> Let's get it straight. <laughs> my mama, my grandmamas, my dad, my granddads, my children, celestial and biological. So yeah, that's that's what's ringing in right now. I had to pull that in because I haven't thought about it in a while um making my way just trying to make my way into the space where the intervention says okay yes it's now time to produce that album immaculate conversations is what will be the skeletal system and I am going to invite readers, um, tarot readers, and astrological readers alike. I um, have plans to uh, invite a few uh, local artists to just do their thing. Just uh, make it um, a luminous tent of intellectual, emotional, creativity, creative, playful, narrative, voiced, rhythmically voiced. So many think I'm playing. Just like so many thought he was playing. <laughs> Yeah, just like so many thought he was fucking playing. <laughs> so that is the show and tell that's ushering in today's General Assembly. Now, I do have some Lenuminous activated notes, but I think I'm going to save them for the closing. Yeah, I'm going to save them for the closing. We're going to get into it. So, I'm trying to see if you can see it. Write your plans in pencil. Rigidity is lethal. You have to be flexible when you are a creative of original content, when you are a dweller of right brain hemisphere. I'm going to read a little bit of this. I'm not going to read all of it. I will post the link inside the keynotes so that you will have access to the full Uh, the article is hosted on Forbes.com, written by Margie Warrell, W-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. While having a plan can help you become more successful in achieving a goal, sticking rigidly can work against you and hinder your chances of achieving the results you want. If you're facing an uncertain future, or having or have suddenly found yourself in a situation that is far from what you've been planning on, you may find yourself feeling a little bit out of shape. If so, let me begin by sharing a short parable with you. Alongside a river, an oak tree and a patch of reeds, R E E D S, grew side by side. The oak tree was strong and proud its enormous trunk and branches reaching far above the tops of the slender reeds below. One day, a great storm came from across the river, and the strong winds blew with all their might. The oak tree, as strong as it was, was toppled over by the winds. 
but much to the dismay of the oak tree, the weeds were still standing. The reeds replied calmly, we were not blown over because we were flexible and moved with the wind. Although you are strong, you fought against the wind and lost. While having a plan, oh, that was the end of the parable. Let me pull. <laughs> Back into the article. <laughs> while having a plan can help you become, while having a plan can help you be more successful in achieving a goal, sticking rigidly can work against you and hinder your chances for achieving the results you want. An interesting study conduct, conducted by E.J. Masicampo, I believe, M-A-S-I-C-A-M-P-O, with Florida State University has demonstrated the importance of flexibility in achieving goals and adapting to the changing circumstances without permanently being bent out of shape. What he found was that while committing to a specific plan for a goal can improve the chances of success, it may also cause you to be less flexible and not see alternative means to better meet the goal. I've been holding on to this article Wow. It was written October 31st, 2015. And I've been holding on to this article damn near pretty much all of that time, all of this time. And it's interesting because of all of my book bags and boxes and papers and pencils and stuff, I would lose it and I, and I stick it in a folder. And then I'll lose the folder. And when I say lose, just me in, in the mix of all of it. And then come across it again and pull it out and stick it in another folder. <laughs> always write your plans in pencil. Always. It has always been my thing. Um, and I will even add to it and keep a whole lot of eraser handy. My journey from when this first started in 2009 definitely didn't start the way that it is now and I don't really want to say ending because I know that I'm transitioning into another space but this 10 year increment I couldn't have never foresaw it I could not have never started out with a plan that would depict this right here, right now. And I know quite a bit of folks be looking for um, money or some type of financial funds to solidify, vet and validate one's success. But in my opinion, success truly is just the raw natural accumulation of connecting dots, successively connecting dots. Like, Mr. Al, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? <laughs> One of those type of things, you know? <laughs> like, and, and not having the plan and pencil, yeah, you're going to bite through it before you get a chance to like really be able to embrace and be part of the Tootsie Roll Center of the Tootsie Pop experience. <laughs> Y'all know I love my metaphors, right? <laughs> I have had to go back to the drawing board so many times, countless countless amounts of time
in my wholeheartedly, and I'll call it a defense only because that's the word that's bubbling up right now. In my honor, <clears throat> we are in Libra season. <laughs> Balance is the mission. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In my honor, I have accumulated all of the wealth that you can't see. I would not trade not one challenge, not one disappointment, not one sorrow, not one setback. And I wouldn't change none of it. Not one frustration, not one moment feeling like I have no choices to I have more than enough choices but don't have the means to tap into those choices like my observation skills grew beyond words they grew they grew into something that I know for a fact that I'll be leaving this realm with And if this 10-year road had not constantly kept dropping me hints and dropping me jewels to say, pace your patience. It's not going to look like this, you know, after you do this, this, and a third. You're not going to feel like this tomorrow. There's certain energies that you have to contend with. But they won't stay. Don't neglect them. Don't shun them. Yeah, they don't feel good. But at least acknowledge their presence. Even in your frustration. If you have to be a cranky ass, you got to be a cranky ass. There's something within the midst of your crankiness. No, everyone is not going to understand it. And the majority of them are going to misconstrue it. Leave them be and allow yourself to be free. Like, let it come and visit with you. Allow for it to speak to you and un un unveil some things to you. Allow it to reveal itself to you. Take your note. Okay, stand by, folks. All right, all right, we're back. So, um, one of the things that I had to become very flexible in in addition to mastering the skill, was having a conversation with myself. Whether it was silently or out loud. And I really do want to take the moment to try my best to dismantle this whole thing. Excuse me, the whole stigma around talking to yourself. You want other people to talk to you, don't you? I know I do. Not always, but I do. And because I'm not a small talk type of person, um, my conversations have to have some type of meat to them, meat and weight to them. Um, and it's all outlined in my birth charts right there. It's all right there. And so I used to... Um, dial it back and um, not understand uh, why I couldn't do the chatty Cathy, why I couldn't get into like, and I mean, when I say chatty Cathy, I'm talking about step into that mode regardless of who it was. Like just, just step into it and just start talking. I used to judge myself harshly for the inability to do that. Over the last 10 years, it has been showing me where I fit. And not a lane that was already carved, 
I had to carve it myself. And I was working with very primal tools. For a long time, I didn't even have a cell phone. Like, I did most of it with no convenient technology. Now, this day and age, I'm so happy about it because my apprenticeship, if you will, my astro apprenticeship was of such a primal nature. My astro alchemical processing was of such a primal nature. Like this, this was my, this <laughs> was my word processing for a long, long time. And then because I said before in other uh, installments, like me double dutching with poverty and, and being inside this vagabond phase, like not having any coins on some days. So technology went bad, piecing together softwares, like learning WordPad, okay? Hmm. It was something. It was something when I could no longer dwell inside the convenience of the Microsoft suite. <laughs> And it, when it first happened, I thought my whole life was fucking doomed. I was like, how am I supposed to process? How am I supposed to do this? And it's funny because my intuition and my better judgment and my wisdom all sat back and let me whine for three days. I was in such a dismal... <laughs> I was mad at the fucking world. I was like, okay. And 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 already a writer, but I was just so I was so used to processing within the convenience of, of the Microsoft suite. Like presentations was on fleet and yeah, I was doing it. And then um Everything crashed and I had to go back to the bare essentials. And I remember the day when I first opened up WordPad, I was like, hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on a second. Okay, okay. <laughs> had to figure out what's, you know, what's going on with the animals. <laughs> <sighs> One of the joys of operating from the homestead, right? I have to remember what it was I was talking about. I'm telling you, all of that bumping it there, that was weird. Um, uh, conversations with self. And so when I lost the ability to tap into that convenience, I did not immediately figure out, okay, well, I can't do this. So let's get into, yeah, to the point where it almost broke me. And it probably did. I think I might have shed a sense of my old self. And... By the fourth day, right as I was waking up, it said, don't you have WordPad on that laptop? Like, you can still open up, like, all your documents. You may not have, like, all of the fancy formatting capabilities, but you can still type. You can still get the raw written content into, um, you can typeset. <laughs> and that's more important right now. You can typeset. You don't necessarily have to format right now. You can typeset. 
And when that came through, all of my frustrations released. The sense of forward movement came back upon me. And it was like, okay. So I slowly followed it and I um, started opening up some documents. And yeah, it was, it was, it was what it was. That was a year ago. To this, to this day. <laughs> Shout out to Red Pill and Blue Pill. <laughs> You could look at my because see, it's formatted now. <laughs> see, I'm trying to figure out the words to use because I think that if you would, if you were to look at my copies today, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference to the point where I have had to screen, I have had to make screenshots where it says WordPad up on the top just to <laughs> prove to folks that I'm literally working out, I'm working from WordPad over here. <laughs> and the more and more I worked with it, and the more and more I found evidence that I could still achieve my goal regardless, the more and more certain things within WordPad started to reveal itself to me where it was like, try this, like click on this, like see what this does. And even with um, like me being able to, let's see, what is this? Me finding, um, I'm trying to see if I can, yeah, paint 3D, didn't know anything about it like nothing knew nothing about it nothing that was a lot more frustrating to like get into but still after a few like losing stuff and like not saving stuff and yeah after a while though I now can make visuals within it as if I was in publisher or PowerPoint. Incredible, I tell you. And so now to look at uh, certain, let me see, I'm trying to figure out if I can just kind of show you something. I have a, um, had a couple of drafts um, to give you some insight on what I'm talking about here. Um, Which makes me want to say, don't get it twisted. Like, I am still, like, <laughs> I am still handwriting stuff. I am. I am still, um, I am still taking <laughs> notes. Oh, here we are. Okay, so, like, and even this has been revised since. But, like, the creative, like, the, the, the opportunity to be creative was through the fonts. Like, this here is actually a font. It is actually a font. And so it required me to get more creative with what I had. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't still like toggle in the back of my mind, like certain conveniences uh, that the, the full suite of word processing would allot me. But I still kept going. Um... Aiming to find my way. Even so much so that twice, not once, but twice. I lost several overly populated folders with all sorts of original content in it twice and it was amazing because I was saving them on flash drives 
But in both instances, like I was just only saving them on flash drives. Like I wasn't backing up the flash drives. And I've learned a long time ago, like I really don't save my important stuff on the hard drives of these gadgets because they it, they, they have the ability to crash without notice and then you really screwed. But um, I wasn't backing up the flash drives. And so when it asked me, did I really want to delete what, what it was that I thought was just a document? When it was actually a group of folders, like it was folders inside of folders inside of folders, and had the nerve twice to delete like a main folder. The first time it happened, I cried. Like for real, I did. I lost my fucking mind and I was like, what just happened? Like, what just happened? For real, what just happened? <laughs> so I'm frantic, went into this depressive mode. And um, it just so happened that my best friend calls me and he's like, okay, you don't sound right. Like, what's going on with you? <laughs> so I told him, he was like, get the fuck out of here. He was like, so he's part of the IT crew. So he gave me some, some tips on whatever, you know, what it is that I needed to do. Now I was able to retrieve some of that stuff, but not all of it. Like I, I, and I did not remember inside the vagabond life. So there is no regular income coming in. It costs to like get some of this retrieved or whatever. So don't have the means. And right at the moment, because I am closer to the 10 year mark. Remember, this thing started in 2009, 2019. You don't really do too much asking folks to do stuff for you because right now their judgment is you should have you should have popped off by now. <laughs> so I really did. I suffered in silence trying to figure this thing out and I pleaded to the entities within my celestial bound. Like, what is really good? What's going on? The second time it happened, I had to laugh. Yeah, I just was like, for real? <laughs> Are you like, this is really how we going to do this? Really? <laughs> and it made me think about the monks who create the, the mandalas and how they will create these intricate like artistic formal patterns that are you know like completely in awe with the divine in alignment with the divine like just in solitude and silence they create these immaculate pieces of artwork and then they they destroy them and they start all over again and when I say they have intricate details you can go do a search and what is it? M A N A D A L A. I believe that's the that's how it's spelled. Um, and check the monks out. This this ain't no this ain't no shabby handwork. This ain't no shabby artwork. Immaculate. They erase the whole thing. Start all over again. And so the second time, before I could even get into feeling sorry for myself or feeling, you know, trying to account all that was lost and all of that kind of stuff. The instances about the monks, it swamped in. It swarmed in. It was like, hey, listen, <laughs> don't waste no time. Don't waste no time. Whatever it is that you can remember, recreate it. Start to recreate it. Like it's there. You might not think it's there. Come on. Like we gave it to you the first time. You don't think we'll give it to you a second time? If you worry about it, if you whine about it, if you become frustrated about it, it's our kryptonite when you go into those spaces. That's not saying that you can't ever go into those spaces, but we really want you to tune into when you go into those spaces. Sometimes it's very needed that you go into them spaces. Sometimes it's straight kryptonite to your creativity when you go into them spaces. They, It was like my invisible guys was begging me, please don't go into those spaces. Like, just focus on it. Like, you, we can, we, can re, we can redo this. We can redo this. And lo and behold, 
Lo and behold. I think that many think I exaggerate when I say I have an entire semester worth of coursework. Yes, it is around astro alchemy. Yes, it is all driven through the seeds of one's birth chart, a one's astrological readings, a one's one's natal chest placements. It's all around that. Yes, it is. The moon, the stars, planetary alignments, certain energies and synergies. Yes, we talk about serendipitous intentions a lot. So it is of an unconventional nature. Conversations with self. Journeys with self. The imagineering of one's inner domains. But it's still an entire semester worth of content. <laughs> All the same. <laughs> Just the same. <laughs> So I'm going to go over real quick. <clears throat> Celeste Hadley's. Now I have the entire transcript and I think that I'm going to put a link so that you may um, tap into the transcript as well with her TED Talk, 10 Ways to Have a Better Conversation. I mentioned it before inside of, and I can't remember if it was inside the 90 Day Journey by Heart series or the... Seagull Squad series. Either way, um, both uh, series now have playlists, which I will definitely put in the keynotes um, for you to have easy access, as well as it's something else that I feel like I want to put in there. I can't think of it right at the moment, but um. So yeah, it is uh, the 10 ways. And I often say, because my love language is language, <laughs> and I can't say that I'm right or wrong in this instance, but my love my lovable sentiments, let's call it like that, because I love in different many ways, as does all other humans, humans. <laughs> but conversation is a key to my heart. It has always been. And those that invest wisely within their moments to converse, I take note of that. And it can't be small talk. Like, I don't mind talking about the weather. I really don't. I don't even mind talking about them bum-ass redskins. I don't. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't. Like... But at some point, I will tap into uh, wanting to know more about a concert that you went to that, you know, you are excited about a piece of artwork that you bumped into that you are ecstatic about, a course that you took that elevated your capacity to become closer to you. A moment in the arena where you had to, like, on command, drum up the courage to do this, that, and the third. Or the moment where you began to present uh, original content and it made you feel very vulnerable. Or the moment where you became the quest mate of laughter or of compassion or generosity or of gratitude or where you stood as the referral letter writer or the love letter writer, where you read bedtime stories. Like those are the moments that I really talk in conversation. Those are the moments where the real authentic me truly shows up and sits as the student, as the observer, as the teacher, as the coach. Um, those are the moments when the conversation 
becomes my plug. I do become alive in those moments. And it automatically uh, begins a certain connectivity to me and the other human. It does. So when Celeste did this TED Talk and she broke it down, um, that was the day that I became amongst her number one fans. And so I'm going, not going to read the entire transcript. We're going to bullet the, the 10 ways and then I'm going to close it. Uh, close out the segment. Well, no, I'm not going to actually, we're going to, we're going to go over the house. We're going to go over some house announcements and then I'm going to close out the segment. So, um, so number one, do not multitask. And I often say, especially those who I love to speak with, first off, (laughs) because those gadgets ding and chime and will fuck your concentration up. Most often, my gadget is on do not disturb when I'm inside production mode. So only those on my favorites can get through. And that means that I don't mind you particularly interrupting my flow. Like you are important enough for me to stop what I'm doing. And most often, it's my parents, my children, my best friend, yeah, and a few others. I can't do, I can't hold a conversation and do other stuff. I've never been able to do that. I did not realize it was a uh, lofty skill to have. I just knew that something wasn't going to get paid attention to. And if I am taking the time out to converse with you, then I want to give you that undivided attention. I, yeah, that, yeah, I, I, because I can, in my full power, say, I'm going to call you back. (laughs) So when that was number one, when that first came out, I felt good because it's like, okay, now that's, (laughs) let me say this. Am I good with all 10 of them? No, I'm not. (laughs) Number two, do not pontificate. I'll do that. But. Uh, It really does depend on the moment, the person, the situation. (laughs) Like if my inner voice says, go in, I'm going in. (laughs) But if it says, chill out and listen, I chill out and listen. If it says it's time for you to be silent because this, this right here is not, yeah. So you will be silent enough to to bring on the understanding that it either needs to be shifted or we need to conclude it. (laughs) So number three, use open-ended questions. Start your questions with who, what, when, where, why, or how. Number four, go with the flow. Number five, if you don't know, say you don't know. Number six, don't equate your experiences with theirs. Now, I don't really have to work on this. I've worked on it. So that's what I'll say. That I'm now at the point because maybe four or five years ago, I truly gave that some attention. Like I gave it an overhaul. And then really started getting to the point where Especially inside of those hard conversations. I didn't offer it up if it wasn't asked for. Like folks would literally have to say, what's your opinion on this? And I would even like toggle back to say, you sure you want my opinion on this? Are you sure that's what you're looking for? For them to say, yes, yeah, give it to me. Let let me hear what you have to say. And then I will relate my experiences. Um. I attach it nowadays, I attach it to all of the mad hattery content that I am um, learning. And I have graciously learned how to 
give the tender transparency of when I too have been part of this, part of that. And this is what I've been discovering as a result of a familiar situation. But one thing that I did notice is that once I became aware of it, that I started to see it in all sorts of conversations. Sometimes it happened and it seemed like it was okay. Sometimes it happened and it wasn't okay at all. So the conversation will begin and it's like, huh, I'm not feeling too well today. I'm a little down in the dumps today. Um, I'm cranky, I'm confused, I'm perplexed. It feels like I have no options. My back is up against the wall. What, you know, whatever the opening statements shall be inside of what is truly showing up as a tender conversation. And before the person can completely say how they're feeling, the other person is, yeah, I know, because this and this and this happened to me, but da, 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 da. to the point where the one who initially wanted to heal by unlatching it completely withdraws. Being a witness. Being a conversational mediator, being a witness of such situations is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking mainly because I happen to be the type where it's like, are you going to let me finish? <laughs> like, are you going to allow me to talk? Like, I will do that. Everyone does not have. That at. The purview like and I'm grappling for words but um, everyone does not tap into that that everyone isn't readily at the ready to tap into the source that would put the brakes on the conversation and recalibrate it and bring balance back to it um, so when I saw that as part of the list especially being number five and learning tarot and learning numerology and understanding like what number five is and then how it reeled in, I mean, or spilled into number six. And so number six is don't equate your experiences with theirs. Them being neighbors, number five, if you don't know, say you don't know, or just be silent. Like silence really is golden in certain situations. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pontificate. <laughs> Number seven, try not to repeat yourself. Yeah, I really, you have to work on that because I, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> Number eight, stay out of the weeds. And I'm just going to, um, just read this whole so it, it's frankly people don't care about the years the names the dates of all the details that you that you're struggling to come up with in your mind they don't care what they care about is you they care about what you're like what you all have in common so forget the details leave them out It has always been a pet peeve of mine. And I don't mind some details. And sometimes I will encourage the details. But I'll go to say that in some instances, especially as we become um, better in our conversational communions, that we know when to hold them and when to fold them. We know when to give the details and when to get straight to the fucking point. <laughs> um, that takes practice. It takes practice to um, know which details to include and which ones to leave out. And I don't have the blueprint on that. Like I, I it, 
for me, it's truly a situation and moment by moment um, where, where I may start off with one or two details. And as the conversation continues to unfold, um, it gives me the opportunity to elaborate or bring in more. And I do. Number nine. Listen. Everyone loves that t-shirt, just do it. I give you one better. Just listen. Just listen. Number 10, be brief. A good conversation is like a mini skirt. Short enough to retain interest, but long enough to cover the subject. And Celeste's sister is the one who, uh, that's her motto. <laughs> so I'm going to read the closing part of the transcript. Um, so I quote Celeste. You know, I grew up with a very famous grandfather. And there was kind of a ritual in my home. And I'm just going to pause real quick. Because her, her grandparents, and her parents lived in the same home. I am hashtag multi-family living. Always have been. It does well for the babies. And then... Um, you don't have to come out of your pocket paying tons of money for strangers to watch the kids. Not saying that they're all strangers, I'm just saying. Where the babies can come home and relax, there's always, there is someone home to uh, allow them to unwind from school within their own dwelling. But I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get off on that. <laughs> Back into the quotes. People will come over to talk to my grandparents. And after they would leave, my mother would come over to us and say, do you know who that was? She was the runner up for Miss America. He was the mayor of Sacramento. She won the Pulitzer Prize. He's a Russian ballet dancer. And I kind of knew growing up. I'm sorry. And I kind of, and I kind of grew up assuming everyone has some hidden amazing thing about them. And honestly, I think it's what makes me a better host. I keep my mouth shut as often as I possibly can and keep my mind open. And I'm always prepared to be amazed and I'm never disappointed. I thought that was pretty cool. Well, all right, folks. Okay, so we are getting ready to, you know what I was going to, I wonder if I should. So there is this thing called a coaching preparation form that was originated by the Henry Kempsey House, um, Coactive Coaching 2011 copyright. Maybe I'll do a separate. Yeah, maybe I'll do an addendum. Because I know it's going to take a moment to um, walk through all of this. So, yeah. But we're going to save it. Um, and I might even do it uh, right after I'm done with this. And then it's like, well, Thea, if you're going to do that, then why not just go ahead on and make it the whole. Because I'm almost certain that if I do this general assembly will be two hours long okay so let me just think about it because I wanted to draw cards too maybe that's what I'll do I'm still going to split them I'm going to go over our clubhouse um, sentiments for uh, regarding Lenumen is activated and then I'm going to do a separate 
that is going to go over the coaching preparation form and we're going to pull some cards. Yes, I'm going to do it like that. And then, um, yeah, it'll make it... Uh, Not only easier, but me being held accountable for not being long-winded and having these things over an hour long. <laughs> or just slightly over an hour long. <laughs> so, um, September 25th. So, it's just a few days ago. Yeah, so like I said, within the, within the seven-day cycle. Um, Luminous activated. Weaving one's lifelong tapestry from the wonders of intrapersonal developments, inner healing arts like meditation and journaling, and courtships with self and invisible muses. Quest mate networking. We are now linking up with those that are not necessarily on the same paths, but on familiar quests or those that have been or am about to embark upon. Inside this networking matrix, if you will, only immaculate conversations may circle. And so that's love. I have to... Um, I always have to, I don't know, I don't know, and now I'm going to have to go through all of them because I don't know where, but I, it, I, uh, ow, I know that's right, already ready, ready, wait for me, She Rose Journey, Legacy Building, Knowing Thyself. And I actually have another Immaculate Conversations card within the deck, but this is the one. This is the one that will enrich the quest, the quest mate networking inside of Immaculate Conversation circles. Comfy, comfy sofas and story summits. Imagineering story sponsorships, chaperones that help observe, process, and get the best out of the ebbing and flowing of creativity because it truly does ebb and flow. No one's on a thousand all the time. No one's on a thousand a hundred percent. There will be some ebbs to that flow. You have to be prepared for that. You have to sway. Yeah, lean like bamboo. You have to be able to write it in pencil because you will be erasing some things. You will be saving some for later. You will be indulging in some now and saving some for later. As well as the Plan B Affinity Clusters. I am in the mix of recruiting those that are good with helping with the drafting of plan B's. We are wonderful with plan A. A lot of time inside the sea of sorrow when we have to contend with our plan B's. So having some affinity clusters on standby to usher in um, certain advice and uh, certain story summits or becoming a story sponsor in those situations will definitely help the, the flow of creativity. Um, especially when the inner voice is saying, please, please don't tap into that. That becomes our kryptonite when you tap into that. So, I've pulled some 
activities that I believe is immaculate. Mm -hmm. They are immaculate elementals when we are activating led numinously. <laughs> so one is dancing and music meditation. And you know what? I just thought of something. I'm sending. Oh, and it's 11-11, September 30th, 2019. Through this gateway, I am going to send some love and light to my girl, Indira. Because in a conversation with her just a few days ago, not only did she give me some wonderful leads on where I could... Uh, where I could um, begin hosting pop-ups and having some of my um, astro artisan uh, clubhouse classes. She blessed me with a meditation song. And I, I know that I may... Um, not um, be saying it, saying her name properly, but it's what is it? Is it Janae Aiko? A I K O. Yeah, so it's called Trigger Protection Mantra. And baby, if you know what? I might put that in, in the keynotes too. When I say... <sighs> I so needed that. That, that. that piece, that... Oh my goodness. It arrived in such divine timing. It arrived. So lots of love and light, my Indira. Um, okay, so the next one is yoga, um, Tai Chi, uh, meditative movements and nature walks, breath work, imagineering, um, as well as yoni and lingam massages. Everybody grown here. Like if you really want to tap into some knowledge and get some understanding about how you may um, release certain um, energy centers during certain moments. Now, of course, if you're going to become addictive to it, then you're going to do yourself more harsh than you are, more harm than you are honor. Um, we're inside Libra season, so balance, as I've said before, is the meridian, um, which naturally and honestly segues into chakra station clearings and cultivation cultivation which can simply just be done by directing your attention inward close your naked eyes direct it um, inward and just focus on the center in a either clock a clockwise nature or a counterclockwise nature um, and then the last one is the quietude quest where you're going to either paint, journal, um, compose songs, love letters, poetry, um, prepare a meal, uh, draw, illustrate, or restyle, rearrange a room or a sacred space. And then here are a few um, closing notes. Uh, by honoring your innate wisdom of beauty and creativity, in turn your honor, in turn your honor and yourself. Self being capital S, capital E, capital L, capital F. 
sacred slash Sankofa energy life force, which is not the same as the self within me. Ultimately, refreshing your pathfindings, your unique pathfindings and individuality. Rhythmically set time aside to tap into the powers of hunches and invisible invitations to explore desires to authentically express, release, free yourself for fun, purify and prepare and be the bearer of fondness, discovery and delight, a.k.a. become a story sponsor today. <laughs> And a story sponsor is one that contributes to a better story, help folks change the narrative, become the conduit so that they may show up on a better side of the story. One moment, folks, one moment. Okay. So, the more you lean in, turn on the turn on your channels of awareness. The more the inner you, okay, hold on. How did I? I don't know how I'm supposed to read this. The more you lean in, turn in. The more you lean in, <laughs> turn on those channels of awareness. The more the inner you shall be awakened and respond toward the greater good of you and your hue. I, uh, and see, when I was writing this down, like I didn't want it to get away from me. So I was, but I believe it goes into, um, when I was speaking about, um, how I wasn't sure how, it was going to do when I tapped into WordPad, but the more and more I visited with it or turned on my channels to um, respond to it, more and more awakenings came as a result of just sticking with the engagement. And so at the end of the day, if you will, a greater good of me and my hue did emerge. And so last but not least, if you don't know where to start, pose the question to your inner Alexa and ask him or her, even though, so your inner Alex or your inner Alexa, <laughs> and ask him or her, where do I start? What can I begin right now? Then render the patience for the answers because they will arrive. But be sure to be receptive to the answers arriving by way of symbols, sign, serendipitous communication and communion, meaning that it could be on a meditative walk. It could be while in solitude. It could be while in music meditation. It could be while inside of an immaculate conversation. Always have something to write with handy always because everything is content or everything is potential content and context everything 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 and so with that being the case folks um i'm gonna wrap it up um i would like for us to continue to keep in mind because um, house is a home and that is where the heart resides inside the heart chakra which is a wonderful segue for me to invite you to the series the our 90 day journey by heart and it really is just all of my ramblings and true transparencies as I travel over my 90 days and what it is that I am learning or whatever my inner voice tells me I'm going to share within those installments um, we're, we're relatively just getting started. Um, I think the next installment that I will be doing will be somewhere between day 14, 15. 
um, going off the top of my head right now. So, so we we are still uh, fresh across the threshold with our journey. So, if you'd like, I definitely welcome you to tune in. And so, I'm going to close with the two um, quotes that I received from listening to. Um, Sabrina Monarch's um, Magic of the Spheres podcast with Lucia Anas Satyagraha and it's S-A-T-Y-A-G-R-A-H-A. And so Lucia says, I give myself permission to express myself imperfectly. And she also says the programming is thick and we're here to shift and change it. And in my humble opinion, I believe through Immaculate Conversations is where it's going to begin again. Because we are going to talk about what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about our Shiro Hero's journey our legacy building, and our to met nose, which means us getting to know thyself. So thanks for joining me. And I wish you well. I wish all of us well. <laughs> yeah, well wishing activated. <laughs> Luminous. <laughs>